Hey guys, it's John, and I'm playing Scotcho in the five minute pool. Scotcho from Spain. España. And we've got a D4, D5, Queen's Gambit. It's Friday. TGIF, right? Everyone loves Fridays. Let's do the exchange variation. This is pretty much what I play exclusively against the QGD. I've talked about it in past videos how most top GMs seem to think knight f6 on move 3 is like a slight mistake compared to bishop e7, specifically because of this line. So, we'll see what Scotcho has to say about that. So he'll likely castle, I'll play knight ge2. Sometimes they play knight f8 here. Ah, that move. That's also a possibility. I think I'm going to send this knight to f3. Or should I castle first? I think castle's queen side is best. A lot of times white goes long in this line. So we'll do that. Because I had a game several months ago where I faced this line, OTB, and I put the knight on e2, and I remember thinking the knight wasn't as good there as it is on f3. So take that for what it's worth. Okay. So he's planning bishop f5 if he gets a chance. Play rook he1, I could play g4, let's play g4. Let's hide the king now. B rook c1. You can play h5, it might be slightly troubling, but. I want to jump my knight into e5, but he just plays f6 and kicks it back. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play g5 myself. This seems weird to just give him the f5 square now, but I want to do this. The thing is, he can bring this knight back to, to trade. Yeah, he should probably play knight d7 soon, if not on the next move. He can't take on g5 because I take on f7. So we got that taken care of. h6, okay. Just go h4. I'm not opposed to trading. Okay, now f4. Stay solid. You went back. Why? Why would you go back? This knight is a poor piece for me. What am I going to do with it? Let's reroute it. It's kind of cool because maybe now I'm threatening to take on h8 and then play rook take c6. That's a nifty threat. Oh, he saw it. <laughs> he sidestepped the threat. Let's bring this over. I think he's gearing up for knight f5. Yeah. have this weakness on e3. I'm going to continue maneuvering this knight. So now I have an eye towards bringing it to c5. Again, I'd be pretty surprised if he didn't play knight d7 at some point soon. Or yeah, knight c4. That's even stronger. Well, knight c4 is a good move. Yeah, because he's hitting e3. Annoying. What about e4 now? e4, he takes on e5, I take on f5, he takes on d3, I take there. Huh. That's an annoyingly strong move.
e4 does not look that great. All right, let's just do it. But I think he can take here, and I plan on taking on f5, but he takes d3. I take on e6. Then he takes on c1. However, I think this endgame... Well, actually, I can play e7 now in between move. My pawn is kind of doomed if I do that. Okay, let's just take. I'm going to be down a pawn, but... After he does this, I can play rook h6. I think I have good play for the pawn. How do I always end up down material and time in these videos? <laughs> and yet, a lot of times I don't lose. It's amazing. He should play rook hg8. Yep, he heard me. I'm going to centralize my king and just take care of the f4 square. Just double. Let's do this. And down a pawn, but position is not at all that bad. I'm going to keep both rooks on the board. And then I'm going to bring this rook into h6 and try to turn the screws on him. That's what we'll do. Good position for my king. Go rook c7, I play b3. I'm going to put a rook on f7. Just go king back. Maybe maybe he should go rook f7, yeah, and then like king here, and then swing the other rook over. e5, okay. Yeah, but e5, can't I give you a check here? Check. What are you going to do about that? Oh, that's what you're going to do about that. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Pawn takes, king f3. My active king. Check. It's doing okay for me. Stay active. Stay active with the king. Maybe go a4 next. a4, a5. And go king c6. Probably should play king c6. Should still play king c6. I think. Well, king c6, rook e5. I have counterplay. Let's go here, defend everything. And now that. King e5, I just go back to b5. I think I have enough to hold. Yeah, he's going to go for the draw, I think. I didn't see that knight c4 move. That was really annoying. Yeah, I'll just do a draw because I don't have grounds to play for a win. Um, I didn't see knight c4. That was irritating. So, let's go to the middle game. g5 was a controversial decision. In retrospect, I don't think I should have played that move. So the thing is, I want to get my knight on e5, and I want it to be secure. But if I play knight e5 immediately, he has f6. And I'm just having to go back. No sacrifices work or anything like that. So the goal of g5 was to try to secure the e5 square. But I think that that move creates too many weaknesses, mainly the f5 square. 
So I, I need an alternative plan here. I'm not quite sure what to play. Could play. I could play like one plan I've done in this position is like King B1, and then Rook B1, B4, B5, minority attack. But I have a feeling Black has good defensive possibilities against that. What else could be played? I could try to maneuver this knight somewhere, but I don't see anywhere good this knight should go. Maybe Knight A4 would be a decent try, at least to start. The other thing is he might play h5 himself soon, which could force my hand in regards to this pawn. So I'm very curious if the computer like sees anything for me. That does say knight a4. What happens if he just trades and then plays h5? Okay, now jump in. Let's say take. Take. Okay. Oh, right, okay. So that's an important distinction, because when he plays h5, Knight e5 is, is a better move, because now f6, the pawn on g6 would be hanging, whereas previously that pawn was a, on h7 defending it. Okay, so that's an important thing to know about this whole structure. That didn't occur to me in the game. Yeah, g5 was no good. Engine agrees. Probably worse now, yeah. Because outside of my knight on e5, I don't really have any other good pieces. Four. He went back to g7. That was surprising. I guess he's just trying to uh, hedge against f5. And now the engine says b3 is necessary to keep the knight out of c4. Because yep, I did that, thinking I was going to do something like that. But then knight c4, and that e3 pawn weakness is coming back to bite me. It's just hard to defend. Like if I go rook e1. He swaps rooks, and then he takes on e3. His pawn's undefended. You can take either way. Let's say with this one. So, and if I try to swap on h8 first, well, he just gets a tremendous amount of play. Rook h3 coming. Everything pointed at this pawn. So I played e4, going for counterplay. Might not be that bad, actually. So take, take. Wait, why am I suddenly so much better? Engine, what did I miss? <laughs> Please don't tell me I can take. OK, let's try to figure this out. Engine off. OK, so it was giving me a very favorable evaluation, whereas I thought in the game I was just barely getting compensation. So he takes on c1. I wonder if that means I have something better than just taking back his knight. OK, I considered e7 during the game. But I thought he would just go here, and then his king would come up, and I would lose this e7 pawn. And then I looked briefly at some line like, let's say, take, take, here, just rook e8. Right, and I'm stuck. I have a feeling it's going to say that I should have played this move, maybe. Or is that too crazy? That might be too crazy. But I'm thinking like f5 could come after that, and then g6, and white has these two passers that <laughs> honestly look pretty intimidating. Like, let's just say you know, he saves his knight and attacks my rook. I wonder if I can just do this. I mean, this is a fantasy variation, but something like this. Take, take, and then take here. And he can't stop my pawns. I'm getting g7 on the next move. <laughs> That'd be insane. But is that forced? I mean, let's say let's say I play f5. Why can't he just go like this or something to defend everything? That's a volatile position now, though. I mean, maybe something like take, take, rook f1, let's say. If I had more time, I would have considered this more closely. So let's see what it says. Rook takes h8, rook takes h8, then e takes f7. Okay. So if I do this right away, it's still good for white, but taking on h8 is even better. Wow. Wowee. So then if he saves his rook, how much you want to bet that if knight e2, it's going to say f5? <laughs> yeah, f5. That is cool. 
Wow, those passers become strong so fast. They grow up so fast <laughs> into queens. Um, yeah, because say like take, take 96, trying to blockade the pawns. Knight e1, knight g7. I can just bring my king up. <laughs> Excuse me. Bring my king up according to the engine. He's more or less frozen. At the very least, white should have a draw. But also, if this rook ever moves over here, maybe I switch switch sides and try to bring my rook. Well, actually, I can play rook h8 anyways, come, or rook h1 anyways coming up to deflect his rook because he's got to stay monitoring the f8 square. That's a brilliant resource. Taking on h8, take on f7. So, for that reason, the engine says black should not even save the knight. He should just play rook f8 himself. Oh, and I can still play f5. Nice. Take, take g6, rook g7. Now I should finally take, and it really likes this endgame. Yeah, I can see why, because I'm going to advance my king up. His rook is in a poor position in front of the pawn trying to stop it. This is like the worst position for the rook when you're trying to stop a pawn. Because the rook is just deactivated. That would have been cool if I had the intuition and the guts to play that. But alas, I just took with the, the king on c1. Yeah, now I think I'm worse, but I have a feeling I have enough play to draw. The computer actually puts it as almost dead level. Let's just see quickly if there was anything majorly different I could have done. Rook h7 it likes more. Okay. Guess I didn't see this king e3 move as being a huge mistake or anything. Here I could have traded. I liked keeping the rooks on for some reason. Check. Mm -hmm. E5. Check. I gave a check here. So, so far we're playing pretty accurately check. for both sides. Yeah, the evaluation hasn't wavered too much. So here if I go after his D4 pawn, or his F4 pawn rather, with rook D4, he has this move. I didn't like the look of that. Take and take, and he's up a pawn. Although, engine says I can play this move. Interesting. Because if f3, I assume rook takes g6. Remove the defender. And I think I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in time to get this pawn. So, okay, so it looks like I could have played rook d4 in that case. I just tried to shuttle my rook back and forth on the fifth rank, trying to stop him from playing rook f5. Let's just check the end game. B3, okay. A5, yeah, I think a draw makes sense. It briefly crossed my mind to try to find some way to win because he had spent a lot of time at this point, but you know, I've been defending this whole game. I've been worse. I'm not any better here, that's for sure. So a draw is a fair result. Wow, I wish I would have gone for that resource way back. Uh, when he captured on c1 on move 27. That would have been really nice. Taking on h8, take on f7 with f5 in the works. Powerful pass pawns. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that game. Oh, I was going to check who Scacho was. Just see if he has a name. Scacho from Spain. Nope, no name. He's played a lot of games on ICC, wow. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'll be back with another video today. Please leave me any feedback in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.